And so, let the prayer be for one-pointedness. Let the prayer be to see through the illusion that anything else has meaning, but to know yourself and to live this truth. Let the prayer be for pure devotion. Let the prayer be for the strength, the courage to follow the longing of the heart and find out what is at the bottom. Where does this longing come from? Where does this pull of seeking come from? It is to find out and to surrender everything into this. Cannot express in a way that can be understood because the mind always thinks that it knows better and the mind is naturally in collaboration with convention. To know this, to live this truth, to really come to the essence nature, it requires for all of the threads of the ego sense to collapse into the source and so that all that can create distraction naturally just dissolves into reality and the knowing of reality is what is shining. Right now in this moment, reality is shining. Awake being is awake to itself and you already are that. Everything that is longed for, everything that is being sought is already here. It is already here. You already are. There is no teaching because what can be taught, you already are. A teaching is just another way of hiding. In truth, the seeker generally does not want to find. The seeker wants to be a seeker because there is uh, like an addictive conditioned habit to maintain the sense of being incomplete, not enough, and to have something missing. Because the pull to the play of the world is incredibly alluring. The me and the mind is absolutely committed to keeping itself alive in a way that it doesn't even know, right? It's unconscious. It's an unconscious addiction. And so the only flow of grace we can jump into is the longing, is the pull for this truth, is a sense of devotion, is a sense of the resonance that there is something more, something deeper, something way more profound. But until we are granted the great boon of one-pointedness. We will continue to cycle in the play of karma. So let the only prayer be for that one-pointedness. Let that prayer be that we are granted the boon. <laughs> because it is by grace and grace alone. But to be available for grace, we have to hang out in the presence of now. We have to be here, be here so fully to let every thought be a thought of God, of grace, of freedom. Let every thought be about this longing and not about the me. The immaculate being is selfless. We could say the true self is selfless. And what is being spoken of is that there is no self-interest, no interest for the me, no selfish gain. There cannot be, how can there be a, a continual 
a continuation of the play of convention and ego patterning. How is that possible? Of course it is not. Where there is ego patterning playing, there is selfish gain at play. There is a me and a mine that wants what the me wants, right? There is selfish desire. A human life is here for the possibility to see through desire, to see through the illusion of selfish gain. Can only see through the illusion when we are resting in clear vision, when we are resting in the being that can see clearly that nothing, no thing has any relevance or importance, that nothing is ever really happening. We could even say that nothing exists, but that's too much of a conundrum for the mind to be able to even stay present in, right? It becomes uh, a place of fear. So we don't want to create fear for the mind because we want to come to the presence of being in this moment. We want to come to what is here now, the grace, the presence of being that is here so that we are not in concept and ideas where we are not in the hiding, in the me and the mine. It is to feel the resonance when we speak of one pointedness, when we speak of this prayer for one pointedness, just to notice what happens if the mind has any fiber or any energy around, well, I don't even really want that. You might as well turn off your TV right now because it's a waste of time. If it's not what is truly longed for, it will not come forward because it is right here. It's right here, this truth. And it requires a pull, a one-pointedness, a deep longing to know this, right? So if there is any sense of this really not being what is longed for, it is to see that and to know that what is nourished, what is nourished is what will be lived. Every word that comes forward is for you. Every word that comes forward is for you, is to support your longing and to support the possibility of coming to what is longed for, to see that what is longed for is right here. There is no project to complete. There is no work to be done. There's nothing that needs to happen before knowing yourself can get stuck in concepts that this is a process in time, but it is not. It is all here now. The awake field is here now. And you are that. You are the immaculate awake being. So as these words come, where you feel the resonance of truth, where there is already an aliveness, the speaking of the prayer for one, for one pointedness will bring forward an amplification of that that says, yes, yes. Even if the life can be in distraction, there is an alive resonance inside every being. And these words come just to fan the fire that is already inside you. If these words are coming, it is because there is an energy of distraction in the field, an energy of losing a sense of what is important. And what we are here for is only, only for what is real and important, right? 
What is satsang? Satsang is a meeting in this one-pointedness. It's meeting in this truth. It's meeting in this incredible, profound reality. It is a meeting in the oneness of being, in the wide open heart. It is really the outstretched hand, and that outstretched hand is the innermost being, that is your innermost being, that reaches out and says this way, this way. Do not dilly-dally. You imagine that there is all this time, but what is time? What is this life really for? What is this life really all about? And so as these words come, if you feel the fire ignited, if you feel the stirring, then grace is here and it is stirring in your innermost being and it is calling you, calling you in. If you feel any kind of opposition or let's say challenge coming from the mind, then it is just to watch that. And just to see that, to know that you are the awareness of it all. You are the aware being. To know this truth, to live this truth, it takes everything. Truly, it takes everything and it has to. It has to take everything in order to know that what this truth is, is not a thing. It is not a thought. It is not an idea or a concept, and it is not something that is that can be imagined, and there is no doing or attainment in this. It is the immediate and direct remembering of the essence nature of all beings. The only way to know yourself is to be with yourself and to come to such a depth of radical honesty as the pure aware being where there is the ability to see as the awareness with clear vision. What are the tendencies that are pulling the attention? What is going on? What is pulling the attention into the playing out of separation and the collaboration with the imbalance that is the play of the world. Hmm. Right here now, you already are. So let us cast aside all concepts about what this is. This is about meeting here now, meeting here now in the divine reality, recognizing the essence nature that is already here, awake and illuminated in the knowing of itself. So as these words come and you feel the resonance, whatever you feel, do not be distracted by any thoughts, anything that wants to distract or pull you away. Be only with the fire of your heart. Be only with the resonance of truth and the deep longing to know yourself. The deep longing is God's longing for you. It is Ma's grace already alive right here. Any sense of longing or seeking is that which is already in the deep knowing. So to collaborate with the longing, to collaborate with that felt deep sense of what is this pull? What is being sought? What is truly longed for? It is to feel the resonance of this and to be pulled 
by the grace to know what is here right now, right now in this moment, that there is a knowing in the being and the knowing of the being is where that outstretched hand takes in complete surrender. It takes its own hand, it receives itself and falls into the remembering of itself right here in the silence in the stillness we find the self the being the simple being in the silence in the stillness right here now Hear the knowledge that is pure and true. Hear the purity, the innocence, the immaculate being that you already are. It is to cut through all of the ideas and concepts that this is a process in time and just to be here, to be here and to Face yourself in this moment so fully, whatever is happening, just to meet yourself. Meet yourself as the openness of the wide open field of awareness. The awareness can see it all. The awareness is all seeing. Seeing all the moving and changing, and yet never ever disturbed, never leaving itself. Attention can wander but awareness never ever stops being aware. It is to be the awareness that can see attention wandering. And when awareness is aware of attention wandering, it's like it magnetically pulls attention back to awareness. So to be the awareness that can see attention looking towards the things. But as awareness sees attention looking towards the things, awareness itself resting in its own rooted, aware being, holds the attention in the innermost being, home, true, real, in reality, seeing the moving changing, and resting in the knowing of being, knowing that all that is moving and changing is simply a flow of appearance, just images on a screen, just a movie. And if we rest here as the awareness of being, and we do not follow thought, and we do not believe thought, we rest before thought, we rest here, before the first thought creates identification. We have to have a vigilance here as the aware being, watching how the mechanism works. That if the first thought identifies and attention wanders to that thought and creates a sense of a me, identifies with the mind body, identifies the I with the mind body. And as soon as the I is identified with the mind body, then the story is up and running and you feel like you are the character in the movie. So we have to come before the first thought. We have to come before identification with being in the movie. We have to come before and be the aware being that can see the screen that can see the movie, to be the awareness that can see the movie, can see the person, can see the thoughts, can see the body, and recognizes in its simplicity, right here now, what I am is not the mind, because I can see the mind, I am aware of the mind, from a vaster, more 
unbounded free perspective, aware of the mind, I confirm in direct experience the mind I am not. Can see the body, aware of every aspect of body, the feelings, the sensations, the physicality, the appearance of it, all of it, as the awareness of the body can confirm here now, indirect experience, body, I am not. If I am aware of body from a vaster perspective, then that I am not. Anything that I am aware of, I am not. What am I that is aware from a vast and open perspective? What am I that is aware of all that is moving and changing? Aware of sense perception, aware of the images on the screen, the movie, the play of life on the surface? What am I that is aware of it all and yet somehow untouched and undisturbed by any of it in this felt sense of presence before the first thought is followed, before attention wanders, I just am here now, simply being. As these words come, the being is speaking to itself, the one being that is shared by all beings, the one being that is common, essence, nature, to all beings, is right here now, wide awake and singing the song of silence in utter stillness, unmoving and unchanging, natural, relaxed, soft, wide open, free, clear, immaculate, pure and innocent, just as this being has always been. And you are this being, that is for sure, that is truth, that you are the being, the one being. And so satsang is this invitation to meet in the being, to meet in the grace that is the one self, common to all, and never ever touched changed in any way by any of the flows of intelligence that dance in all kinds of unique configurations as the appearance of life. All of the flow of creation does not touch this immaculate being, right? Before creation, you are. Before the appearance of life, and world, you are. You are immaculate and pure and untouched. You have never ever taken shape or form. You have never ever been someone. You have never ever been separate from life itself. You are the source of all. You are infinite and unbounded and free and pure. And the knowing of this grace is right here now in the deep resonance of your own being is the innermost being singing this silent song and already knowing itself. So even the image of the outstretched hand is just a bridge to recognize what you already are. We have crossed the bridge. We are resting now in the innermost being. And so where are you? Are you here now in the innermost being? Or has attention wandered and identified with something that is moving, changing? It does not matter in truth. It matters not because wherever attention is, the being still is but every moment holds the most incredible alive possibility for attention to dock 
back into the inner awareness, right? We could say attention is awareness that wanders into a sense of outer, even though it's not really outer, but it, it arises as a witnessing consciousness, right? It arises out of the source as a witnessing consciousness. And what we are inviting is that witnessing consciousness docks back in to remember that it never ever leaves the pure awareness. Witnessing consciousness is absolutely unquestionably one with pure awareness. Pure consciousness is one with pure awareness. It's the same, it's just words. And yet there is an arising in pure awareness where pure awareness knows itself. That knowing is consciousness. It consciously is aware of itself, right? So there is a depth of pure awareness where it is so deep and so silent and unmoving. We could say there's a sense that it doesn't even know itself. It's just the pure, purest silence. And yet as awareness is aware of itself, it naturally brings in its knowing a flow of consciousness. And that first flow of consciousness is the knowing of itself. It's like a radiant light of its own knowing, a pure radiant light of the knowing of itself. And this consciousness, this pure consciousness is what flows as all of life. It's what flows as creation. It what, it's what flows as manifestation. And yet who you are in truth is before all of that. And this journey home is from now to now. And it's to know who you are underneath the images and the flows and the ebbs and dancing of creation. Who are you underneath creation? Who are you? What is your source? Where is your origin? From where do you arise? What are you in truth? What is the true I? This is the quest of a human life. It is to discover who are you in truth and to live as yourself, simply being. So let us get on track. Let us get on track. Hmm. Life is living itself and the images on the screen are going to continue to appear. To be on track and resting in essence nature is to be living in this truth, regardless of what images are appearing on the screen, right? So we don't want to be living in concept and ideas. We want to be living in this deep knowing of what is true so that we do not leave the deep essence knowing. So we are living the aliveness of life right at its source. When we are living the aliveness right at its, its source, life is flowing. And yes, images appear, creation flows. And yet, there is a deep knowing of the eternal nature. And it is this eternal nature that is utter freedom. Utter freedom. Freedom from it all. And there is a process of refinement that happens. And the process of refinement that happens is pulling back all of the threads of consciousness into the pure consciousness so that the depth of unity can be so rich and full 
this is the Atman, right? So where the knowing of the fullness of this is, there is a maturing that happens. There is a maturing, and the maturing is the refinement of all of the disparate and discordant flows of consciousness that can create distraction and identification. Of course, once we have already seen through the illusion of separation, boom, it's over. It cannot come again, but there are residues. There are residues which are these discordant patterns of consciousness that can pull the attention away. So we want to know the truth of being the pure awareness, being the pure being, and to recognize that living as the pure awareness, we see through the illusion of separation, and yet we can still see the images on the screen, but we are not distracted by them. And any moment there is distraction, we will usually discover distraction because we get our fingers burnt. <laughs> so when our fingers are burnt, it is that resistance or suffering or challenge comes up. And this is just a sign. It is a flow of grace that says distraction is happening. Attention has identified with a thought. When attention identifies with a thought and the sign comes, it is then to see it as the awareness. As soon as you are seeing it as the awareness, the attention magnet is magnetized back to the innermost being, right? So that attention that can wander as a flow of consciousness is magnetized back. So, we can rest in this depth, but we can also recognize that attention will wander until there is no more of an allure, let's say, until all of the vasanas have been seen through, until all of the samskaras have collapsed. And this is the process of refinement. It's a natural flow that happens. So we do not want to create a mental project around some scars and vastness, because any project that is undertaken with the mind is a hopeless game. It's a game that will never ever end in completion. So what we are speaking of here is the recognition in consciousness of the process of refinement, the process of unity, let's say. It's about uh, consciousness coming into a depth of intimacy with itself in and as everything so that it merges into the remembering of itself. So all consciousness, mind consciousness, body consciousness, all flows of consciousness that create the appearance, all of it is in a natural flow to refine and merge into itself. But guess what? It needs a source to merge into, right? So where mind consciousness is just dancing around, living its life, as a me, it doesn't have a source to merge into. It has to know its source to merge into. It has to have the way, let's say, illuminated. And where is the way? It's inside you, <laughs> right? You are a vehicle for this. This is the purpose of a human life. You are in service as a vehicle for consciousness to know itself. You are made out of consciousness. You are flows of intelligence. And the knowing of yourself, the knowing of the pure awareness, the knowing of the essence, source 
of who you are in truth is the grace that allows all consciousness to know itself and collapse into itself at the point of you. So the more points there are, let's say in the infinite field that are awake and in the knowing of what is true and docked in, let's say, eternal satsang, <laughs> then the point resting in the knowing, in pure awareness, and not letting attention wander, then this point is in service, right? This point is in graced service, and this point is functioning at its fullest potential for a human life, because it's functioning as a point for consciousness to know itself, experience itself, and to merge into itself, into its purity at the point of view, right? Of course, what you are is the infinite field. So don't get confused here that we're speaking of anything personal or anything separate, but where you feel to be unique, you are unique. There is a unique flow, let's say, of laws of nature, of intelligence that creates the unique point, but the point is absolutely one and moving as one flow of life, one flow of consciousness, essentially in absolute truth, it's all divinity, it's all pure divine wholeness. <laughs> Ma, <laughs> this is what it is in truth. And as these words come, sometimes the words will bring a resonance of recognition that will ping <laughs> and sing its truth and sometimes it won't, right? But that's because there's just layers of mind and concept in the way. Everything is moving as one incredible divine murmuration of consciousness so that everything can know itself and merge into itself. Now, consciousness that is playing on the surface in separation, mind consciousness, collective consciousness, it doesn't have a point to collapse into. Well, it finds its points, right? But there aren't that many on the surface of life yet. It's in a work in process, right? So on the surface of life, on the, in this realm, let's say, <laughs> the human realm, on the surface of life, the, the points that are awake and available for this transformation, this transmutation, this alchemization to happen are still fairly few and far between. <laughs> so it is for every being, every being, the possibility to recognize what this human life is truly for. It's to come into the oneness, to surrender selfish desire and selfish gain, surrender, and not to even want any of this for the me, right? You cannot want awakening or God for the me. It has to be longed for, for God alone. It has to be such a depth of surrender that there's no one that wants anything from any of this the all selfish gain is completely surrendered and it's all for God and God alone. It's all for Ma. It's not for me. It's not, do I like it? Do I want it? Does this work for me? It's take everything, <laughs> take everything. <laughs> but none of this is mine. We own nothing, nothing. All of the things that we imagine, the houses and the properties and the things, and the clothes and the cars, all of this th stuff that, th that we think that we own and, the, and that we are so attached to, our families, our friends, our relationships, none of it's real, none of it belongs to us. And yet we are holding on, holding on, holding on. 
until we come to this readiness that says, take it all, take it all, that none of it matters. This is the depth of freedom that is possible in this life, you see? But we can be living as a sadhu, a sadvi, or a sannyasi, right? In the inner, in our innermost realm, what it looks like on the surface, it doesn't matter. We don't have to make the appearance look like anything. It's about where are you living inside? What is happening in the inner realm? What is important? Where is your attention? Where is your focus? How deep is the longing? What are you willing to surrender? How, in a way, there's a naturalness to this. It's a natural unfolding. But as we speak of it, as we speak of it, it offers this incredible possibility just to really notice where you are in this unfolding, not as a way of measuring and definitely not as a way of judging or bringing the mind in to create guilt or ideas around any of this because none of that is of any any value but as these words come there's a magic that can happen in that when you can feel what it takes when you can feel what it takes what true submission true surrender is what devotion is when you start to feel that in your own being and you start to feel also the sense of what's hanging on to the, to the story and the me and the mine. You just start to feel in your own consciousness a sense of consciousness itself seeing its distortions, seeing its own corruptions, and also seeing its own light, right? Because there's no one that is directing this unfolding. It matters not to anyone. The whole surface of life um, images matter not. There's no one marking your book or following you or watching you or giving an, a, an opinion or judgment. It's about your inner quest. It's bringing alive the recognition of what this life is for, bringing that fire alive inside you so that you can feel that fire your own fire and how blazing it is or if it's just a small spark where the mind is saying well actually I kind of like my life just how is it, how it is right it's just a sign of where consciousness is in its unfolding right and it matters not it matters not but what this satsang is for is to fan the fire and to really support where the fire is blazing, really support where that one pointedness is alive, right? To merge and come into this recognition in the one pointedness that all the support that you could want is here. It is just to feel in your own sense of what this is all about. There is a power and there is a fire here, which is the fire of truth. And it is blazing and it is alive and it is what this human life is for. And so as these words come, it is just to notice what happens, just to see as the aware being, to watch, to feel, and just to notice. <sighs> Yeah. 
where every thought is of God, where every, every move is for God. Where nothing else is wanted but God, but Ma, the self, the being, where nothing else is wanted but this truth. This truth is here. This truth is here, right now. Let the only prayer be for one-pointedness, for a depth of surrender, a depth of devotion, that it may be granted For these boons to be granted, it takes for us to rest in the one-pointedness, longing only, only, only for this truth, longing only for the highest, purest possibility in this human life, for the devotion to truth to be so full and one-pointed and that the prayer be that may every desire, every distraction be seen through. That the prayer is to be humbled and humbled and humbled all the way into and to know that however life is playing out is the great offering always whatever whatever comes forward it is always for consciousness to meet itself experience itself and to be humbled into itself to humble away the egocentric patterning humble away the me and the mine truly into the oneness so the oneness the atman can know itself as brahman so the oneness can know itself in divine wholeness. Let every thought be in this direction. Let every sense of longing and pull be a magnetic draw into a greater one-pointedness and fanning the flames of the fire. Mm -hmm. Every being will go as far as they will go. But do not let arrogance and complacency fool you. Do not let the mind, thinking that it knows, fool you. Be the awareness. Be the awareness that is constantly watching, constantly alert, resting as the awareness, and know that in the play of time, it takes as long as it takes. But here now, pure awareness is already immaculate and clear and silent and deep. And it is to rest here. Let life flow. Let the images on the screen appear and just keep watching, keep watching, keep watching. Can watch too as the character is played in the divine play of life. And the divine play of life will take on whatever flavor consciousness needs it to take on. But to rest here in the pure awareness, to dock and to keep docking in 
the pure awareness so that the meanderings of the mind are not the false reality that is believed. Mm. Night and day, night and day, looking for, seeking for this grace, night and day, night and day. But to know that in every moment, the finding is here, that it is not a quest of seeking for the future. The finding is here in the felt sense of being. The finding is here now in the timeless eternal truth of who you are. To feel your own presence, to feel your own self, before the first thought, you are. The knowing of this is everything. The knowing of who you are before the first thought is everything. It is the way, the light, it is the Satguru that is guiding itself to the glory. Refining, refining, bringing a one-pointedness. Satsang is always here now. Satsang is eternal. It is the eternal meeting with yourself. And it is to be here now in this eternal flow of satsang, resting in this flow of devotion to truth, resting in the being, being this, being here now, never leaving yourself never allowing attention to dark in identification, to keep attention resting. In a way, the work is just to keep bringing attention back, bringing attention back and resting in the felt sense of being and just watching, being still and watching, being still watching the images on the screen and recognizing that as the pure aware being, you are never moved or touched or disturbed in any way, that you are ever present, ever still, ever peaceful, ever free. And hear the flow of grace, and hear the flow of grace. The flow of grace is a wide field of intelligence. And the intelligence is consciousness knowing itself and knowing the process, knowing what all this is and how this is all happening. And this fine, fine perception is right here. The mechanisms of consciousness and the process of refinement reveals itself as a flow of intelligence in order to make the unfolding and refining and merging into itself, into the unity, the unified field, the Atman seeing everything, the Atman seeing only the Atman, right? The self seeing only itself, merging, merging, merging. And so that it knows itself intimately in absolutely everything. There's no mystery in it. And yet, of course, in truth, it's a complete, mysterious, free, profound, divine unfolding. But there is 
of recognition of the flows of intelligence that bring a smoothness, a smoothness to this gorgeous unfolding. And the smoothness of the unfolding allows the bliss to flow. And we want the bliss to flow because the bliss is what, in a way, illuminates and lubricates the process of consciousness unfolding to itself. It makes it smoother. The more that we open to the field of intelligence, but it's all about the pure awareness, the pure awareness resting as the aware, awake being and knowing the unquestionable truth of who you are, what you are, being the point that consciousness can collapse into until, let's say, at the point, all consciousness collapses to know itself before consciousness. The transmuting still happens. There is only this, right? Only this, only this, only this. Body sleeps, eyes open, images on the screen appear. Only this, only this, only this, only this. Only this, only this. Just an opportunity to see where is attention? Is attention docked? in the pure, aware, awake being? Or is attention wandering, wandering in the jungle of the Maya? To be aware and to bring it back. In the moment that awareness is aware, brings the attention back. Hmm.